This is Glenn Hughes, the voice of rock, and you're listening to Music Mania. You ready for some screaming heavy metal? We rock! But the evil that men do lives on. We gonna bang your You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here's your host, Clint Schweitzer. Dash, man, we really appreciate you calling in today. How's everything going? I know you were just in our neck of the woods here in the Midwest, man. How how did all that go for you? And uh, I know you experienced some bad weather here. I got to apologize for that firsthand. Oh, <laughs> well, we made it. We made it now, but uh, man, that was cool. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah, well, you, you know, you left, you know, in, a little too soon. It's like 80 degrees today, so we're starting to we're starting to get back into the into the spring a little bit. I know. <laughs> You being from Arizona, I mean, this just has to be a foreign concept out here. You just got to be out here like, what in the world is going on? I mean, <laughs> man, I know we were down there thinking, you know, it was gonna, you know, probably be, you know, freezing at least, and that's fine. But we were in Iowa, and it was like six degrees, and we're going, what's going on? Here? Yeah, it regularly <laughs> snows here in April, and that's just something that I'm not, still not comfortable with, and I'm from here. But you were out uh, a lot with the, the band Flaw. What was that like? Just th- just talk about this whole tour. You guys have been out for, for quite a while. I know you got a couple dates left on this thing. What's it been like out with the, this band Flaw? What have you guys learned? How's this been going for you? Flaw has been awesome. Uh, Flaw and the Clown were the two bands you were out with. And just utmost professional bands and um, just a killer lineup. I mean, the Crown is kind of a... Uh, in- uh, Flaw's got that really 2000s rap rock thing going on and... Uh, Co-op, my band is more like a uh, kind of like a classic rock meets uh, everything from that band. Yeah, absolutely, and I th- that, that's what I think stands out about you guys. And I think what what's the term? Is it uh, down and dirty desert rock? I think that's what I've heard you describe it as before. <laughs> what, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, we coined it as desert hard rock. It's just kind of that you know gritty, dirty, you know, kind of metallic tasting. You know, kind of it's just that that. Um, Pretty hard rock, you know, with uh, with the modern overtones. What this you, the new album, the self titled debut dash is coming out here um, on June fifteenth. Talk about this thing. I know that you've released an EP uh, prior to this, but talk about this and how important it's been for you guys to hone your craft as a live act leading up to the recording of this album. Oh, it's definitely been. Um Definitely been beneficial to do that because, um, quite frankly, uh, this album you know has a lot on it that um, leaves a live show to be desired. So um, we we put a whole lot of work into it. It's a a real classic rock album with a really heavy modern guitar tones. And um, yeah, we uh, we've been really rehearsing to bring that album to life on the stage. And um, I think we've done a very good job of it, and people are responding really really well on the road so far. That's, I think, here's the thing, you know, and I think that you guys have built this thing the right way and doing it, and you're, you're grinding it out uh, in the clubs, touring. I think that's just kind of old school, really, because, I don't know, in, in this modern day of rock, you know, there's not a lot of bands to me that, that, that stand out, that kind of go through, you know, back in the day, I mean, bands had to go through just through hell. You look at a band like Twisted Sister that spent 10 years playing clubs before they ever got a record deal, and this is kind of a throwback to that. I mean, have you, what, what, when, what is your dad, what has Alice had to say about this, the way you guys are coming up and doing this? Because you're kind of doing it really without his help at all, which is really cool. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've been trying to do that to uh, the best of our ability, you know, and he's, he's always willing to help, you know, in any way, shape, or form, and we appreciate him so much for that. But um, he really taught us, you know, like as a young younger band, just to always you know, be polished and be rehearsed and always be ready for a good opportunity. And, you know, that came our way uh, back in Phoenix about two or three years ago when we were playing the show and uh, Dave Ellison from EMP and uh, Megadeth happened to be there. And, you know, he got to listen to our set and says, hey, you guys are great. You know, I'd love to introduce you to Tom Hazard over at EMP Label Group. And uh, the rest is history. We got, a, got ourselves a record deal, which was 
you know, very unexpected, very appreciated, and, you know, we just, uh, you know, I'll never say anything, you know, more than hard work pays off, you know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely, and it's, that's uh, awesome that uh, you guys are part of EMP. We had uh, Dave on talking about this label uh, probably just a few months ago and amassing quite a lineup of bands, and you guys being a part of that I think can only only help you know going forward. And I, I think what, what's interesting about, uh, I mean, your whole family, and people are going to ask you, the, you know, your whole career, your dad, Alice Cooper, one of the great, uh, you know, one of the great living legends in rock history, but your whole family sort of has a knack for entertainment, I mean, your your mom was a ballet dancer. Uh, your sisters are, are actresses and dancers. And Calico, of course, has been part of Alice's show for some time. I mean, you guys just kind of have this. I mean, w- what is it about the about the Cooper family that uh, has lent itself to this? Uh, you know, you guys all sort of drifting into different areas, but all talented in many different ways. I think that's really cool. Yeah, you know, our parents were very you know open about us trying you know tons of things, and we've always been a very theatrical family, and also a very you know. Um, just active family and trying to, you know, support each other and what, you know, we love. And, you know, Calico, my sister, you know, loves acting. My, my younger sister, Snowy, is a, uh, a makeup artist. Um, she does a special effects makeup and stuff for movies and TV shows. And, you know, I've always had a knack for music. I never really had a knack for acting or makeup, so that's why I don't wear it on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the theatrical side, of course, I mean, that is a natural thing to look at because, um, you know, in my opinion, Alice represents, you know, the, the great theatrical, whatever you want to call it, shock rock, uh, the, the greatest of all time when it comes to theatrical presentation. I think it was one thing that Alice always said that, that stood out to me is that it's not necessarily the way you sing a song. It's the way you present a song. That always stood out to me as something I look for in a performance. What kind of did you learn from him just not necessarily just growing up music i mean obviously your dad's a, a rock star but just the the craft itself the fact that alice almost plays a character on stage and to learn this to to learn how to do that to learn how to really engage an audience is that something that you learned from him or is it kind of like you just picked it up on your own i mean how did that work for you well it's absolutely something i, I definitely picked up from him because i mean you look at him and you know how he how he does his show and just the energy he has. He has passion behind what he's doing. And I mean, if you don't have that, people are going to see right through that. They're going to see that you know you're you're not just playing a character. You know, it's just pretend. I mean, there's sometimes when I I feel like when I'm watching Alice from the audience that for that two hours he's actually not my dad. He is Alice, and then when he's off stage you know, that transformation, you know, goes back. He's not the werewolf anymore, you know, he's the human being. So it's kind of it's kinda of, it's kinda of crazy, you know, it's like you, you you see him on stage and you see how much he's putting into it and just the uh, the passion behind it. And you almost get lost in that that said, like, Wow, is this really him right now, you know? And I still amaze with you that to this day, you know, it's like a complete and utter transformation for those two hours. That's such an old school concept of just theatrics and, and, and just entertainment in general. I love that. It's why Alice has always been my favorite artist in, in, in all my whole life. And I'll tell you, you know, I think that's what, what's interesting you know, about this. And as you look at this, the, the band that you've put together, the things you've guys done, just talk about uh, this band, kind of how you formed co-op, you know, in the Phoenix area, uh, who some of these, pe- these players are and just kind of how you guys formulated uh, this sound, how it all came about uh, over there in Arizona. You know, we started it around 2014, a bunch of friends of mine and myself. Uh, I had just graduated college, and um, I wanted to get back into music because uh, I just realized that was something that I wanted to do more than, you know, what I got my degree in. So I just decided to pursue the musical career, and um, we ended up starting co-op, and we just wanted to start something, you know, just a little bit different. You know, we wanted to incorporate every single person in the band in musical styles where, you know, I had my classic style, uh, my drummer at the time uh, loved the uh, the modern stuff. My uh, guitar player loved the uh, 90s industrial stuff. And we just really took all that stuff and we were like, how do we blend this together and make it like a really, you know, interesting style of music to where, you know, people are all going to get like a taste of everything they like from those eras. And I think we, we coined that desert hard rock thing. And I think that's really, you know, where it took off was uh, from that point of all being equal in being creative. You know what I mean? Not just one person um, just dominating with their own style and saying, just play like this, you know what I mean? So 
Um, it was a, it was an interesting couple of years, and then unfortunately, you know, as in a lot of bands, we had some turnover. Uh, some of the guys had to bow out of the project, and um, just this year, we ended up just switching from a five-piece band to a four-piece band. So now we're one guitar, one bass, drums, and vocals, where we used to be two guitars, bass, drums, and vocals. And um, the, the members that we have in the band now are Jeremy Tabor, who's our lead guitar player, uh, Justin's Fortune Trooper, who's on bass, Nick Spann on drums, and uh, I'm singing vocals. Well, it's something that's really come, you know, you could tell that this thing has been honed and that you guys are really, you know, ready to really take this thing to the next level. And that's what I think the release of, uh, of you know, this album will, will vindicate for you guys. But talking about your, talking about styles, I mean, your style in general, you know, when I hear your voice, when I hear the presentation, you know, it's, it's, it's really kind of a, an awesome kind of gravelly voice that you have. You know, it reminds, it reminds me a lot of, of John Karabi. Like, I don't know, you know, what kind of vocal, oh, yeah. I don't know if you've heard that before or if, you know, if you're aware of uh, kind of his work with like Motley Crue's 94 album or some of the stuff he's done since, uh, Union, ESP and, uh, Dead Daisies, but that's really what it reminded me of. I mean, was there a vocal style that you kind of wanted to, to, to emulate or, or was it just kind of something that came along naturally as, as you guys put this together? You know, it was just uh, over time, you know, I was, you know, when I, when I first started singing, I was trying to find my voice and what was, you know, the easiest thing for me to do. And um, it wasn't necessarily the gravel thing at first. I, I, just, I listened to a lot of artists who had range, but could also be in that gravelly, you know, in that in that gravelly form. Because I have a little bit of a lower voice sometimes when I'm, when I'm talking. So I thought, well, maybe if I, you know, project myself, you know, more than like a drop D or a, a C uh tuning that maybe that would, you know, fit my voice the best. And um, it seems like it's been, it seems like that's the, that's the best uh, range for me. And the guys I listen to, you know, that kind of, you know, gave me my influence, I would say, are like, you know, Cornell, obviously, um, Selby from Godsmack, all those guys who have that kind of gravelly tone but can still, you know, actually sing. Uh, aside from that, you know, like Rob Zombie, you know what I'm saying? I, I love all those types of um, gravelly vocals and the, the rocky, dirty vocals. And but so those guys can actually still sing uh, without the gravel if they if they had to. Absolutely. And we're talking with Dash Cooper. The album from Co-op, self-titled debut, comes out June 15th. What's next for the band after this? I know you got a couple more dates left. Um, on this tour, going to be back home in uh, in Arizona where it's war nice and warm. You know, can't can't beat that. What, what's next for you guys after this thing comes out this summer? What do you got planned, and where can we look for you? What what can we expect from Co-op this summer? Absolutely, actually, uh, we uh, we're off the tour now. We actually left a couple of days early from the Swa tour, and we are back in Phoenix. But um, we came back early because we had already committed to doing Arizona Bike Week this. Uh, this year, um, so we're going to be playing uh, for that uh, for about an hour and a half here in Phoenix, and um, after that, we have a couple local shows lined up. We have a big one in Tucson on April 21st over at a place called The Rock, and then we've got um, our album, obviously, is being released uh, June 15th, and we're going to try and plan a, a pretty big uh, album release party show here in Phoenix for that, but my, uh, my guesstimate is that... Um, in late June, early July, we'll probably be going on a small tour in support of the album uh, up until the end of July because I actually have my third child coming in July. Oh, awesome. Congratulations yeah. on that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, we're going to work up until then, and then we're going to take a little break, and then uh, we're going to go right back out again once uh, everything's so. Dash, we can't wait for it, man. I tell you, you know, being able to, to delve into this project, it's uh, something I think that what's great, I mean, it's, it, it stands on its own. It really does, and it's great stuff. And I was able to look into some of your previous work on, on your EP that you did prior to this and really impressed by everything that you guys bring to the table. Can't wait to see where this thing goes. Dash, I tell you what, man, we'll see out there somewhere. You, you get back to the Midwest. It'll be warmer the next time, I promise. And we'll, we'll we'll get you out here and we'll do something. We'll we'll get you back here into, into the KC area and we'll make it happen, my friend. I can't wish you guys the best of luck. Thanks so much for joining us, my friend, and we'll catch up down the road again, no doubt about that. Absolutely.